This is I've Got Scars, baby. You know, I ended up racing in, in Europe every summer between 2005 and 2008. And, um, you know, Nike, I signed with Nike, just continued to train professionally, lived at the Olympic Training Center for about two and a half years as I prepared for the, uh, the Olympics. And um, I ended up, uh, you know, making the team as an alternate and was, you know, officially named to the team and, and had a great Olympic trials um, and I uh, was sixth in the 1500 meters, but fourth fastest overall in the United States. And one of the few that actually had the Olympic standard, which is a requirement yeah. to even and to be named to the team. And, um, you know, I did compete in Beijing, but I was actually, I was on the team, received the official gear and was named to the roster and all that good stuff. And so, you know, in many ways I had achieved the dream that I had set out to achieve. Um, you know, obviously there's a little bit of an asterisk to it cause I didn't compete in the games, but. I made it all the way to the top, you know, and I beat a lot of the guys, you know, throughout my career that made the, the, the Olympic final, that made, they got medals and stuff like that. So I'm like, am I one of the best in the world? In many ways, I was able to answer that question. Yeah. Um, unfortunately in life, it doesn't always work out that the dream as it comes true uh, or in, in ways that you, you expect it to come true, it always does, it doesn't always work out that way, you know? And so, for many years, I, I, I looked at my running career when I finally kind of had to step away from the game. Um, I looked at it as a failure because I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't do everything that I had set out to achieve. But over the last few years, I've been able to reconcile the experience to understand that in many ways um, it was better than better that it didn't work out the way that I had hoped because it was never about that. But hold on now. Like, I don't want to glaze over the, the why it didn't work out situation because there was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. A very specific surprise that happened that they kind of got in there and, yeah. and, and moved in there that you did not expect. And what yeah, it's, that? Okay. So, yeah, the lingering thing, and it's funny, like, there's like tracing it back, there was actually always these indications of it uh, through testing through physical tests and stuff like that but nobody ever made a big deal of it until mm -hmm. a month before the olympic trials <laughs> in 2008 uh -huh. so at, at living at the olympic training center going through standard physicals what we all had to go through and all the athletes living at the center before the trials our, our olympic trials whatever sport we were doing and i uh, i did my physical and you know i thought everything was cool but you had to go in and get the clearance like hey see your trainer or whatever and, and they just confirm yep Pass your physical, everything is great. You're good to go. Well, when I went in to go see the, the trainer, typically there's only one person in the room. When I walked into the room, you know, the door's closed. So you go into the room in the training center to have your private, you know, you know, meeting with your physician or, or trainer or whatever. It was a full room full of people. And I said, all right, well, this is not good already. This is bad. Mm. You know, so it was like the head trainer, a couple of the other uh, student trainers, a couple of doctors. I think that I don't know who else was in that room. It was it was a lot of people. And I'm sitting there going, eh, this is a small room. First of all, so there's a lot of people already. It's yeah. crowded. I said, what's going on? And the head trainer, um, she says to me, you know, uh, John, I don't even know how to say this other than just to say it like your numbers indicate that you're halfway towards kidney failure. <laughs> 